I recently reviewed the Corsair Strafe RGB with the Cherry MX Silent Switches and I really liked it. And now this is the K70 Rapid Fire with the Cherry MX Speed Switches. And also the K70 Lux with the Cherry MX Red. Hi, my name is Zai, long time gamer and a big fan of Corsair boards. First, let's talk about Rapid Fire. It's advertised on the box as an ultra fast switch designed for gaming. I've been playing Quake since 1998, and I've found I can play on any keyboard, so gaming isn't my primary concern when buying a board. The question is, would these give me any kind of advantage? And the answer? Not really. Perhaps I'm not playing any games that require extra fast switches. Watching this gameplay now, I'm strafing about the same, so I'd like to take a different angle. If someone was going to give you a million dollars and they said they'd offer you another 40%, you'd say yes please, because that's a huge increase. But if someone said they're going to give you 40% more than one cent, you'd say, no thanks, are you kidding? And I think that's basically what this is. It's such a small amount that I'm not sure it's even worth talking about. They're going from a 2mm actuation point to a 1.2mm, claiming 40% faster than Cherry MX Red. Here's my fingertip, which is 20mm on a roller to show you how small 1mm is. So they've gone down less than a millimeter. I mean, you can feel there is a difference. So maybe in time, once we adjust, we could improve our speed. Or perhaps RTS and MOBA players would find more of a difference. I don't think I'd get any better in Quake though, because the switch speed isn't something that's holding me back. Mouse and strategy are far more important. But it's up to you. If you think you have very fast fingers and you're playing games that require faster switches, then obviously give them a try. After using them for a few days and typing a lot, I've decided two things. I like the extra speed, even though it's not really an advantage, it just feels good. And they're very, very loud. If they could make a rapid fire switch that sounds like a Cherry MX Silent, I'd buy that. Here's a quick sound test on both. The Cherry MX Red appears to have a lower tone and doesn't sound as loud, while the Cherry MX Speed does sound fairly high-pitched and quite clacky. Neither have a tactile bump, and both are meant to have a 45cn actuation force. If I had to choose one, I would look at the cost and also buy some O-rings to make them quieter. But just so you know, to get the rapid fires to stop being so loud, you'll need to use either thick O-rings or double them up. Here's an example of O-ring versus no O-ring, and then double O-rings. The letters have no O-rings, the 6 key has an O-ring, and the 7 has 2. So again, it's really up to you and what you think you will like. You can get Cherry MX Brown or Blue in the Lux model too. We haven't seen Cherry MX Blue in Corsair keyboards for a long while, so it's good to see them back. The only other differences I can find are that this Lux model has a shiny volume wheel, and the dedicated media buttons feel a bit cheaper for some reason, or they were trying to give them more tactile feedback, as the rapid fire model feels soft. I prefer them though. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same, and that's definitely not a bad thing. These are the more expensive versions of the Corsair Strafe, and that's why I hope they make them with the silent switches too. I love having dedicated media keys, as I'm always listening to music, and the extra USB port on the back is great for wireless headsets or your mouse. There should be no delay as it is a through port, and because it's at the back, it shouldn't get in the way. They both feature Corsair's popular brushed aluminum tops, the new keycaps that are no longer slippery like my K95, and they appear to let more light through with the larger font, and they both have the wrist rest that is comfortable, smooth, and rubberized. Combine all these features and more, and it's obvious why I love these boards. But personally, I need extra keys, so I probably won't change from my K95. And I really hope that they make a new K95 one day, because I'd love to have the improvements of these newer boards. For a matter of balance, these are not perfect boards. The switches don't feel as good as I've used on others, but other boards don't have the combination of features. So despite that minor issue, I still choose Corsair for my favourite boards. They're open board designs, so they're easier to clean. I usually use an air blower, and the RGB lights show better than closed board designs but some may prefer the white backlight from the strafe. I can understand that, but I really like the full brushed look for the entire length of the board. On the base, these boards have two sets of stands, one for the back, as is the standard, 
but these come with the stands at the front too, if you ever need to lift it from there for whatever reason. No rubber feet on the front ones, but the back do have rubber to prevent them from sliding. And if you have the board flat, of course, there are rubber feet for that too. With the front stands down, the key height is 3.7cm and 4cm at the back. There are 4.5cm with the back stands down. The board measures roughly 44cm by 165 without the wrist rust and about 21 with it. And they both have anti-ghosting so you can hold down as many keys as you want. They've also included a keycap puller and some extra FPS and MOBA replacement keycaps. They seem to be standard on Corsair boards now. Personally, they're not for me, but it's a nice touch. Lastly, the software allows you to change the function of keys, including the dedicated media keys, brightness, lock, and even mute. The options they give you are macro, text, keystroke, shortcut, timer, mouse, and media control. Unfortunately, they still haven't added back the option to open specific folders using the shortcut, but it's a good amount of options anyway. In lighting, Corsair's engine is one of the most versatile when it comes to controlling the RGB. You have the usual rainbows, waves, pulses, and more, but in advanced settings, you can really start to get creative. It's amazing what people have come up with, so be sure to check out the RGB profile community on Corsair's website. In the performance tab, there are just a few disable options. Once you set up the software how you want it, you can save it to the device memory but unfortunately, it'll need the software running to use what you've stored. In conclusion, Corsair boards are my preference. I've been using the K95 as my main board since I got it, and until a board beats it out on features and quality, I'll stay with it. These boards are even better quality, but don't have the extra 18 keys that I want. Otherwise, I'd definitely buy one of these instead. But if you don't need the extra keys, then I highly recommend these ones. But make sure you base your decision on cost, features, design, switch, and so on. Hope that helps. If you want to support the channel, you can buy these with the links in the description. I'll leave links to Amazon and M-Wave in Australia. Special thanks to Corsair for sending these out for review. I look forward to testing more of their boards in the future. Subscribe for more keyboard reviews, sound tests, and gaming videos like this one, and I'll catch you in the next.